Using good software engineering and deployment practices in the cloud has become more and more important for data engineering and data science teams. So as teams work with Databricks, they need to know how do I take some of these best practices that uh, software development teams will not break away from and add them to my data engineering pipelines and my data science workloads. Hey, I'm Dustin Vanoy, and I'll be talking you through how Databricks Asset Bundles is the newest way and the path forward for data teams to manage their CI/CD flows and make sure that they're able to reproducibly deploy in an automated fashion from dev to test to production. Now, a little background. I worked on a team that needed to do infrastructure as code and CI/CD practices from the start on a, a fairly large data platform project focused on Azure Databricks. When we did this, we had some Terraform exports that dealt, that dealt with the networking and the workspace deployments, and that was great. When it came time to deploying jobs and clusters, Terraform honestly didn't have the providers at the time to even do that. In addition, though, we had this challenge of what could be done in Terraform really needed to be managed by the data engineering team. And I had some Terraform practice because of just lack of DevOps expertise around me. I had to kind of learn it, um, but it was not something that I needed to be doing every day to keep this thing working. And so we took REST APIs and Databricks CLI and kind of patched that together to get a good CI CD process that deployed the code, ran some tests, um, and kind of interacted with the Databricks workspace appropriately, both for the dev environment, the test environment, and even for the production environment. So this talk is gonna be about how do we make this simpler? How do we use this newest feature, Databricks bundles, to simplify the way we do CI CD for Databricks and have a clear path forward um, going into the future? So I wanna talk about why we would use Databricks bundles or Databricks asset bundles, also called DABs. And so um, the talk at Data and AI Summit by Rafi and team was really good. And I recommend you watch it. I've got a link to it in the description. But I'm going to borrow a couple slides and try and quickly recap why we would use asset bundles. So when it comes to getting to production, it can be a challenge. It's certainly something you want to automate and have reproducible, especially if you're going to have a dev test and prod environment, which is the recommendation. So Terraform provider uh, doing that for infrastructure as code is a best practice. That is what I would recommend for the workspace and the networking. And now the problem is a lot of times the actual like CI CD process for when code changes and my jobs change, that's going to be managed by the data engineering or data science team and not so much by the Terraform infrastructure team. And so when that's the case, your team may not want to learn Terraform. It's a steep learning curve if you don't know it already. So one of the solutions that we've had for a while is DBX. This is a Databricks lab project, so there's no formal support. And that's probably the main challenge here. So it did make REST APIs and CLI commands more accessible by wrapping them with this DBX utility. You can use it from your command line and you can quickly deploy and run things from your local environment, which is great. You can also build it in your CI CD flow. Really though, what we want is something that's going to be supported long-term by the Databricks engineering team. Now, something that has been very well supported by the team is Databricks REST APIs. The challenge here is that it's low level and there's a lot of do it yourself. And so this is how I built quite a bit of the functionality we used for, for our CI CD process years ago. And it was okay, but there are some, you know, paging through different responses. There's keeping up with the different versions of the API as it changes and just piecing it all together in a way that's going to work consistently. And I don't have yet another piece of my code base that's breaking and, and dealing with bugs in uh, when all it's supposed to do is get things deployed for me, right? So I want that deployment flow to be as like stable as possible so I can focus on the real business value that my, my notebooks and my Python code adds. And so the solution going forward, especially if you haven't really built this out yet and you're just getting going is Databricks Asset Bundles. Right now it's public preview at the time I record this video. So definitely keep an eye on documentation and things that might change a bit from what I'm showing. Uh, and just keep in mind the normal disclaimers with public preview, which you'll see on the documentation page. Okay, so what is Asset Bundles? How's it going to help us? It's going to allow us to write this code once and then deploy it everywhere, which is one of the big goals of CI CD. Uh, so it's going to be YAML files, which is similar to like you'd use YAML with Terraform using quite a few different DevOps types flows. And it's a way to define some resources that can be packaged together and deployed together. Databricks workflows, uh, DLT pipelines, uh, notebooks, building Python wheel files, that can all happen within the bundle. So how they work, work is that you run them from the new Databricks CLI. It'd be Databricks bundle and then the command. 
And so you have a deploy command, you have a run command, and a few other options that are going to look for specific files, uh, YAML files within your project. Now, um, they're used both for local development where you want to use your IDE and then kick off like a, a job or a workflow from your local environment, and they're used for the CI CD process. Okay, so you might have, uh, I'll show GitHub Actions doing a deployment on certain uh, activities within the uh, pull request. So like when we create a pull request in the right spot, it'll kick off this flow that does some testing, uh, uses dabs to actually deploy the latest code, and then kick off a test workflow, uh, and that sort of thing. And so that can be built into CI CD using Databricks asset bundles. Okay, with that, let's dive into a closer look at how to get this thing started, and just a little bit about how we build this into CI CD. Okay, I'm gonna walk you through how we first get our project created with a bundle as part of it. So I'm gonna use Windows Subsystem for Linux. So these are Ubuntu commands, will be similar for other Linux distributions or for Mac. I'm using the latest Databricks command line. You'll need to be authenticated for this to all work. So first we'll run Databricks bundle init to create this new project. Uh, there's a default template that we'll use, and then we can give it a unique name. In my case, I'm going to call it data kickstart dabs. Uh, from here, we get to decide which parts will be included. I'm going to choose the defaults, which is to include uh, everything that's part of this template. And now I have a template, which means I can jump into my data kickstart dabs folder, uh, do a list, and we'll see that quite a bit of things have been created here. Really, the only thing that existed Prior to this was this license that I put when I initiated this Git repo. So I've opened this with VS Code, and now I can actually go and take a look at what's going on inside of this bundle project. So first I've got my databricks.yaml that got created where it defines a bundle name. It tells it where to find the resources that I care about, and so we'll go there in just a moment. And then we define our target. So the first is a default called development. Um, I have it set to true for the default. That's the important piece. So it knows which workspace to use based on how I configured the Databricks CLI. Uh, development's going to use kind of the default values, and then prod will replace some of these values. So uh, workspace and host is defined in both, but this root path is something that can be uh, swapped out differently for production than for development. That way, if I'm working within the same workspace like I am, uh, they don't share a location for dev and prod. So a lot of what matters is going to be in this resources YAML files. So let's jump into that. Uh, without going through all of it right this second, what we've got is a set of resources defined. And there's only a few tweaks I want to make before I run this example. So the first tweak I will make is I will set the cluster size to be a bit smaller because I only have so much quota available. So I'm going to tell it to go from one to two workers as the size. Go ahead and save that. The other thing that I'll do is I will go over to the other resource, which is my pipeline, my DLT pipeline, Delta Live Tables, that is, and make some changes here. Okay, so in my case, I want to switch from the default uh, cluster settings to use mostly default settings, but tell it to use two workers for my DLT pipeline. Uh, now, if you're very cost conscious, you could shave this down even more than I have, um, but I just wanted to show you how to set this because I actually, not only was it a cost concern, it was mostly a concern of the quota that I had. I didn't want you to hit that problem. So from here, we can go and deploy and run this. The way to find out how to do that, uh, there's a few ways, really. The documentation is really good. But I like to actually just use the readme that comes with this. So I'm going to move this readme over here. And we've already done our Databricks configure. That's how you got authenticated before running the init. And now we're going to do a Databricks bundle deploy. So if you haven't changed anything about your environment, then these commands should work. There are some additional options you could choose, but we'll just go with the defaults for now. So here we go, Databricks bundle deploy to my target of dev. So same workspace, but different locations and naming convention that will be used. Uh, if you're looking carefully, you'll notice that it creates a wheel. It's going to upload that, upload all the relevant files, and it's going to let me know once it's completed that deployment. Great, deployment's completed. Let's take a look at running something. Look how handy that is. It gives me the command to run right here. 
we can pop back into our terminal, get a fresh start, and choose run. While this is happening, why don't I jump to my workspace and we can take a look at what's actually happening. So within my workspace, I've got um, my jobs page, my workflows page, and you may have seen this just popped up. I didn't have anything in workflows before this. You can see that it's running at the moment. Let's click into that. And so you can imagine that the dev training would look a little different if I deployed to prod. Um, it's got my uh, bundle init project name included in it. So that should be different if you use a different name, which you probably will. Uh, and it's going to run a few tasks. Okay, I skip forward and we can see that this is completed. As usual with Databricks workflows, if we click around to each step, we'll be able to see a bit about what actually happened. We can go view the uh, cluster and some of the logs there if we choose to. Uh, back in my terminal, you can see that it did print some of the output so that I can see what happened when I'm doing this interactively. I can also use it within GitHub as like a GitHub action, or you could use it from Azure, Azure DevOps or other types of CI pipelines. So let me try and show you just a really basic quick example of how we do that same type of thing, but as a GitHub action, which is probably where I get the most excited about using Databricks bundles because I don't mind jumping back and forth to the UI. I sometimes use a Visual Studio Code extension, but uh, at the same time, once we've got these workflows defined this way, we can easily deploy them and run them through our CI pipelines. Okay, so to use GitHub Actions, I'm gonna actually use something from this repo from Data and AI Summit. Uh, we have an example of GitHub workflows here, and I can take uh, one or both of these and use it in my environment. Okay, so taking this GitHub action uh, definition here, I can go and tweak it a bit and put it in my own repository and use it when I deploy to Git. Uh, I won't change a ton here, but there will be a few key things I change. Really um, taking a look through it and changing what you need for your own environment is probably your best bet. So I'm on my own branch and I've gone ahead and added uh, that same type of code to dev and to staging. Uh, let's take a look at, at dev, which is the closest to that QA one that I copied. So I've got this set up for that when a pull request happens to, uh, a pull request is opened or synchronized, it would, and uh, the destination target is main, it would go ahead and run these steps. What I would probably end up doing is having a bit more of a, a unit test locally type of step ahead of this, but I'm gonna save that for another time. For today, let's go ahead and deploy the bundle in this case, it's development and my default is development. So I don't have to specify a target in the run command here on line 28. And then I need to specify a Databricks token in a bundle environment. These I've set up as secrets in my GitHub action or GitHub action secrets, I should say, in my GitHub repository. And so you can change this name if you need to, whatever you call um, Databricks underscore token. If you change that, make sure you use the same thing in your secrets. Um, I've gone ahead and specified also to do a run. And so this run is going to be of my, kind of my primary job that it was created when I did bundle in it. In reality, you might have like a test job here. And so just kind of pretend that this is running some sort of test or that doing a full run on this would be a useful way to test this in development, right? Okay, so that's kind of the straightforward and then you can add more actions that are appropriate for your environment as you go. Real quick, let me cover that for staging. I've got that set up to be when I actually push to main. So once this pull request finishes and I do a merge to main, that's when I want the staging one to kick off. Uh, and that's going to run very similar steps. If you look closely, you'll see I swapped in staging in a few spots. The dash T staging means use that staging definition in my bundle. And let me show you that in just a second here. I've switched the environment and the token to be for staging uh, and so on. Okay, looking at how I configured staging, uh, in Databricks.yaml, I've made some tweaks here. I uncommented the staging target and I added in a root path uh, with the bundle target in the mix for the root path. And I went ahead and set a run as user just to be consistent with how production was set up. In my case, all of these are going to the same Databricks workspace. You probably want a separate dev staging production workspace. That's kind of a best practice, but you can make it happen in the same workspace. If you're going to use the same workspace like I am for this demo, um, what I've done to change this is in the resources section, I have added this bundle target to the name. So each job, because it's 
deployed with a different target and the uh, path, the root path for the bundle deploy is different. It will create separate jobs, but they'll have like staging and production in this case would have the same name if I don't add something like this to the name. All right, let me make uh, some sort of change here just so that we have something different in the deployment that I'll do. In this case, I'm gonna go from the request package to PyTest. Let's pretend I've got some actual PyTest work happening from my notebook and I wanna go ahead and specify that here. Um, other than that, uh, the main thing to know is that next I need to do my actual like commit and push and that'll trigger that GitHub action to take, take place. Um, so I've done a few changes, not all of them are visible, but uh, they're, it's safe to add everything here. I can do a commit and I can do a push. Okay, now that I've pushed that up, I should go and create a PR and that PR will kick off uh, one of these actions. Okay, so here I've jumped to my repo and it's showing that I recently did some changes on five and I can go and create a pull request this way. Uh, before I do that, let me jump over real quick and show that currently I've run these actions before. Um, but I do not have anything running at the moment, right? So as soon as I go and do my pull request, simply creating that pull request will trigger the dev to start running. And so it tells me some kind of GitHub actions running. I can also go to the actions page to see what's happening. There it goes. Uh, and just to be a little bit more specific about that token, under settings, I can go to secrets and variables. And then actions is where I have a list of secrets and the token is one that I've set here. In this case, it's the same workspace, so I don't swap it out between dev, stage, and prod. Otherwise, I would just use a different uh, secret name and have three separate ones. So another thing to note is that dev was set up with the mode of development, which does a couple of things. If we go look at my workspace, I've got some different name jobs because I've already run each of these. And the dev one is here. The dev one has this dev username as a prefix. And that's just built into how bundles works right now. There might be some configuration in the future, but it does some sort of prefix is the idea with dev. Um, so having the extra bundle name on the end wasn't as critical to, com to separate dev versus staging or prod, but trying to get staging and prod to be obviously different is why I added that bundle name to the job name. Now, if I go look at dev, the other thing that's special about it is that it goes ahead and pauses the schedules when it's deploying to de dev mode. Um, in addition, my DLT portion is going to be set as development rather than production. And that just means that the cluster will continue to run for a little bit after it finishes the DLT work with the assumption I might keep testing this over and over again. And so you don't necessarily have to deploy your development work as development mode, but that's kind of the features it adds for you if you do choose to keep that flagged on for development. When it comes to staging, I probably would override the schedule to um, be different from production or maybe just have the schedule not included at all or disabled. Um, but in this case, I would probably not use development mode. I would treat it as if it was um, production mode um, when it's going to staging and just tweak anything that's special about it in the bundle. So look for the templates and the docs on how you can override specific settings on your jobs depending on the target you're using. Okay, so this is going to run for a bit. It's going to spin up job clusters, spin up the DLT, pipeline and the DLT cluster. I'm gonna just go ahead and see what happens once I go and merge this to main, which will kick off that stage step. Uh, so I'm back on my pull request, and even though it's still running some of the steps, I'm gonna go ahead and do a squash and merge to main. Okay, so I jumped ahead and here's what it looks like once staging has completed. Uh, you can always click in here and see more of the details of what all happened. So even if you're not using GitHub, let's say you're using Azure DevOps or Jenkins or something, similar types of steps will work to use bundles in order to do the deploy and optionally run some integration tests through workflows. So that's been our view about as short as I could make this intro to Databricks asset bundles of how do we work with it locally? How do we get it started with bundle init? And then how do we do it from the CI CD process? At least the starting point for that. I expect this to evolve. There's also been so many good uh, links and information to the documentation released just in the last week of me recording this, that'll continue to happen. So keep an eye on how this evolves. Uh, keep an eye on my actual webpage that I'll link to in the description, where I'll try to keep a little bit more samples and things uh, coming at you, since I can't create a video every time they release a new feature and make a tweak to how this works.
All right. If you like this content, if you want to hear more about Databricks and other engineering, especially within the Azure environment, subscribe to this channel. I hope to see you next time.